Have you ever been on Amazon in a search for subwoofer amplifier? Well, I recently did it. With hundreds of results, I found the cheapest one on Amazon. $17.41. This one by Jacques Owain, the car amplifier board, 12 volt subwoofer amplifier, 120 watt full tone, pure car subwoofer core, 8 to 12 inch. What? Features Poder, the C5198 plus A1941 tube amplifier using nominal power of 80 watts, power of 400 watts, maximum power of 120 watts. Did you see the memo about this? This is not a Mickey Mouse program! Big shout to Ken K over on Facebook for letting me know about this. I figured you guys would want to see what's up with this amplifier. So let's check out this unboxing of this very carefully packed item in a padded envelope, along with some cardboard here to protect these precious electronics of Amazon's cheapest subwoofer amplifier. Here on the face, you can see it is a car amplifier. Has some features and settings and inputs and stuff. We'll go over each one of those individually. First off, the ground 12 volt and remote or via screw down terminals, which can accept bare wire or what we prefer to do is use these spade style connectors. We did use eight gauge wire, which we'll find out soon if that was overkill or not. There are sockets on the amp here for high output and high input, but there are no wiring harnesses with the amplifier or instructions to explain it. We'll just assume it's a speaker level input as well as a pass through going back out to your speakers. Also, we have RCA line level inputs. We have an MP3 input and a volume control. That's right, this is not a gain control, it's a volume control. And 3.5 millimeter there for the MP3 jack, which works in conjunction with the line level and RCAs. In the center, we have a power LED. We have a control switch to go from S base to base to full. Also LPF, which I think is a low pass filter from 40 Hertz to 200. Again, we're not explaining what S base versus base is. We assume flat is turning off the crossover altogether, but we will find out. Now talking about finding out, we're gonna show the guts of the amp, but we're gonna show it later in the video, of course. As far as dimensions go, it is 5.5 inches wide, three inches high, and about 4.8 inches for the depth. It does appear to want to be mounted like in a subwoofer box. So you have a cutout that you can mount the amp straight in. Now we get the amp wired up again using the eight gauge power and ground, also the RCAs. We'll fire it up. You can see the blue power LED. That means we're good to go, right? Good to put it on the amp dyno. Well, not so fast, my friends. We decided instead of doing the amp dyno test first, we're gonna do the speaker test first. We'll switch to control button over to full so that we can do some full range testing of this amplifier. I still have these recoil six and a half inch speakers, car audio speakers set up. So let's give them a listen and see how one of them sounds. Savard 6.5 inch high Q subwoofer has an RMS power handle at 350 watts, sports a 2 inch voice coil, 11 millimeter one way X Max, 22 millimeter overall, 80 ounce Y35 magnet, long strand Kevlar cone for added strength, cast aluminum basket, as well as integrated 12 gauge spring loaded terminals. Overall, these are great subwoofers. I've used them for several years. Thanks to Savard for sponsoring this video. If you want to check these out, make sure you check links in the video description. Use code WOW7 for 7% off these or other Savard subwoofers. Let's go on to more flexing. Overall, I wasn't mad with the sound quality coming out of the bookshelf speaker, but let's switch it over to S bass and adjust this low pass filter to about the middle setting. Let's try it with the Savard HiQ 6.5 inch subwoofer.
Although this is a six and a half inch subwoofer, it is a high powered six and a half inch sub, but this amp seemed to be pushing it okay. I was kind of shocked, honestly, at how well it pushed the sub. Now let's move on to the amp dyno test where we're gonna look at the power output in watts on the left, the ohm load in the middle, the voltage of the dyno on the right. We're also gonna have the remote clamp so that we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. I'm pumped. Let's let the healing begin. Other than unicorn watts of this thing being rated, we have no idea what it's rated. So we're gonna try eight ohms first, see what we get here. Certified, it takes us up to 1% distortion. We're using the 40 Hertz track. We get 39 watts at 14.38 volts. We'll switch over to the dynamic track again, 40 Hertz pulse tone, and just a little bit over 40, 41 Watts at 14.36. All right, let's reset the dyno here for four ohms. We think it might be rated 80 Watts. We don't know because of the crazy listing. Let's try it up to 1% distortion first. Can we get that 80 Watts? No, we don't. We get 55 Watts at 14. We'll set it up here for the uncertified test, which takes us up to clipping. Let's see what we get up to clipping. And we're closing in on that 80 watts, but not close. 68 watts at 14.32 volts. What about dynamically? Can you feel the 80 watts coming? No. <laughs> we're still not there. 69 watts at 14.31. Now we'll switch it over to the two ohm test. See if we can get this 80 watts that it's guaranteed. Let's try it here. Certified to 1% distortion. And we get 43 and it jumps up to 55. And 12 Mondo watts per channel of pure power. I mean, how can you be mad for $17, honestly? Oh well, let's try it uncertified up to clipping at 2 ohms. See if we can get that 80 watts. It's kind of, it's getting close. 74, 14 0.23. Our last chance here, dynamically, can we get 80 watts? <laughs> we do! 84 watts! 14.22 for this $17 Amazon subwoofer amp. Of course, an inexpensive amp comes with its cost, such as efficiency. Check out the super low efficiency. This means this is most likely a class AB amp. We'll find out here in a minute when we take a closer look. Notice a lot of the amp is exposed here. You want to be careful here with the circuit board. Don't want to get you shot or anything. Here on the back, you can see the heat sink fins. Also, you can see a clamp and a screw. This is holding in some of the transistors. We're going to take this out so we can take a closer look to find out what kind of outputs this amplifier has. And as promised, the A1941, which is an output transistor here, shown Recommended for 70 watt amplifiers. Also the C5198, which is a complementary transistor there needed to swing the voltage up and down. And here we have the power supply side. You can see the two transistors that are down there near the transformer. It's hard to see them, but I was able to get an up close shot. These are the 50N06. These are TO220 encased. They are MOSFETs. We also have a 25 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor there. We'll also take off this front panel to see if there's anything else inside that's interesting to look at. And we'll pull it off and fortunately not a whole lot going on here, just a little jumper wire. There's also a capacitor there for the high level input. It does some filtering there to make sure everything is good to go. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this cheapest Amazon subwoofer amp. Obviously the first thing is inexpensive at $17 has decent sound quality, whether it's full range or low pass, has two different inputs. It even has a low pass crossover and it is full range capable. You could mount this right inside your speaker enclosure. Things to consider, it's inefficient with being class AB. There's no remote for the base. You must mount it to the box or at least protect it so you don't get shocked. There is no fuse built in and relatively low power output, but really watts per dollar, you're not doing too bad at only $17. So who or what is this amplifier for? Well, to be honest, I've tested a lot of budget amplifiers before. I'll leave a link in the video description so you can check it out. Something like this Planeus amplifier I showed not too long ago, which has jumped up in price a little bit to $60, but still overall, it's a much better amplifier, much more powerful, much better for your subwoofer than this one. Really at 17 bucks, you can't complain, but if it's not useful for a whole lot, 
then why are you going to even buy it? So I would suggest passing. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you smash me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like my content. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. What about one ohm dynamic for the cheapest subwoofer amplifier on Amazon? Can it handle one ohm? I don't know. Doesn't really like it from what I can see because it's putting out less power. 60 watts at 14.24. Yeah, we'll keep this one at 2 ohms.